All right, uh, welcome to the finals of GPR. I'm playing four color consonants against Ruben, who's on Esper control with a combo finisher, uh, aka the deck I play against in game or in round three, and I lost pretty horribly in that round. Yeah, I definitely have an unfavored matchup. Oh yeah, right seating. Uh, probably should. I think I'm on the draw, right? Because I lost one game. I'm not sure. I'll see what my opponent says about seating because I still don't understand how seating works. Okay, seems my opponent's first. Uh, sure. Well, they're, they're on the play, I guess. Anyways, let me mulligan. Uh, oh, that's so. Uh, hmm. Interesting hand. It doesn't have any green sources, but it has chromatic shard on two. And this hand is extremely good if I draw a green source, right? Uh, it's decent if I draw a green source. I think I'll keep it anyways because it's a good enough hand. Where I have a play on turn two, so I can't be too bad about that. I'm just hoping they don't do anything super insane. Yeah, but like I said, I have a bad matchup against them because first of all, they're a control deck with a ton of counter spells, and I'm a ramp deck. So if they can just counter all my big threats, then I'm in trouble. But also, they have an infinite combo that I can't stop easily. So if I take too long to try to, or if I take too long to win the game, then they just get the combo off and I lose. Uh, so I'll play planes first because I have a double white card in hand. Actually, what's drift off hitting anyways? Is there anything I can hit? Uh, their own drift offs and Keening Bell Tower. Uh, yeah, so Drift Off is not very good in this matchup, but it might be able to hit something. Like, if they Drift Off my guy, then I'll be really happy because that means I get to do something with my Drift Offs. Oh, okay. Well, it's not great for me. I'm going to play Chromatic Shard and see if they counter it. If they do, then that's kind of bad for me because that means I have to draw a land next turn or else I am in very big trouble. But they let resolve. Okay, good. And, huh, no lands. Uh, Well, I need to top deck a land next turn or else I'm going to be very sad. Like, this is the exact same uh, sort of draw I got last time I played against this deck, where I just drew all my big stuff and not enough lands, and I just lost because I couldn't play anything. I'm just hoping that it doesn't happen again. Yeah, I, don't, I really don't want to sack the Chromatic Shard because I know I'm playing into a counter spell. Okay, well, they're... Oh, nice. Nascent Light Vein is even untapped because of Chromatic Shard. This is definitely fetching green because I de uh, desperately need green right now. Uh, So then I just... I, I guess I... And then tried to jam Ardent Aesthetic. Or, okay, let's see. What counter spell do they have? They have Reconsider, which taxes me for two, and they have Sabotage, which is a hard counter. Hmm. I think I'll try to jam on Aesthetic instead of Wild Court Seeker, because Wild Court Seeker also dies to removal, whereas our Aesthetic still gets its value if it lands. Oh, no, they can remove it in response to this thing finding a land. But yeah, but I need to find a land, so our Aesthetic is really good here. If, if only there's something I can do with these two uh, Oversound Ancient. Actually, no, uh, is Clammy Smith better here? The Clammy Smith. First of all, it doesn't die to as many, as much removal, right? Yeah, so it doesn't die to creature removal. And what else? It, it doesn't matter how, how like, or all, all the counter spells that hit my Iron Aesthetic will also hit Calamity Smith. So is it better for me to... Assuming it resolves, which one's better? I think Iron Aesthetic is better just because it gets me a land drop for next turn, and land drop with a land drop, then I can actually do stuff. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to fetch Forest. I should like, actually make this pile view. And then... Uh, let's see if this resolves. I'm assuming it doesn't, but maybe there's there's a chance it resolves, huh? Uh, well, uh, let's see what's on top. Okay, there's uh, there's Fury Call Hellion, which would be really good here, but I definitely need the land, so I'm gonna take the land. And I guess they're not gonna kill this thing in response, so I'm gonna just play Gilded Court out. Uh, I can I can run out Wild Court Seeker. Do I want to do that? What's the worst thing that can happen if I run out Wild Court Seeker? Uh, I don't get to play Running of the Bulls next turn unless I top deck a land. I think it's kind of. I think it's probably worth running this guy out, right? Uh, does it die to? Uh, do, do they run? Um, come to history. Uh, doesn't seem like it. Okay, so it doesn't matter how big Wild Court Seeker is. It's gonna die to the same things no matter what. I think I do jam it because it it eats up from the removal spells, and then I get to. And if I top deck a land next turn, then I get to play Calamity Smith into Running of the Bulls. You know what? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll just. I'll go for it. Uh, oops. Uh, yeah. Wild Court Seeker. Does it resolve? I used up one of my chromatic shards, so this is definitely me committing to. Okay, the letter is. Oh, what the hell do they even have? Do they have like ancestral se secrets or something? And they're. I guess they have ancestral secrets because otherwise, why would they be keeping all this, not, not doing anything right now? Or I guess they have two creature removal spells. Okay, they're just gonna draw three cards. Okay, that's. I think that's all right by me because I st now I have a wild court seeker on board, and that thing's gonna unless I have a uh, kill spell for it, it's gonna wrap me turn after turn, and like. If they try to use a rainbow spell on it, then they have to partially tap out, which means I get to resolve something. So I'm really hoping to draw land next turn, because that would let me 
play around with the bows. Or actually, even better if it's a type land because or a land that makes blue because then Wild Court Seeker suddenly becomes a 4-4 and the nascent live ants getting back will actually be able to tap her mana right away. Well, like even if things don't go super well, I still get to slam Calamity Smith next turn and that's something they do have to deal with. My opponent's definitely taking their time thinking about what to do. I mean, I, I took a bunch of time during my turn thinking out my play, so it's only fair that they also uh, get all the time in the world. And they're going to play Luxurious Estate untapped. They're going to tap out for... Oh, can you bail? Okay, good, good. Now I get to drift off that thing and then... Or uh, no, I don't have to mad to drift it off. Well, but they let me untap. Like, they tapped out this turn and then I get to untap and... Ooh, new divide. Wonderful. Okay. So, I, I guess I just win now. Uh, uh Or no, I, it's not that simple. Uh, do they have any board wipes? They have Righteous Shards, which is a uh, 6 mana thing that will kill both the running of the bows and the th creature it makes. I think I should just take it slow here. So, new divide... Uh, play New Divide, use Guild Court to make blue, or to give this thing island. Wild Court Seeker brings back Nascent Light Vein. Actually, uh, so what I want to do here is get Calamity Smith and drift off into play in the same turn. Can I do that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yes, I can, but I won't be able to tap Guild Court for... Extra, uh, no, Nascent, Nascent Light Vein can just get a planes. So New Divide is going to, I guess, grab island. And that like div diversifies my uh, threat suite, so that means I can... I don't die to a single, uh, after, or I guess, Righteous Shard. Because, like, if they tap out for Righteous Shard, I just drop many of the bullets next turn. And if they don't, then I just drop Silver Sun Ancient. Yeah, okay, this looks really good for me. So, New Divide, Fetching Island, Wild Court Seeker, Rose. And I do need to, like, I need to fetch planes off the Nascent Light Bang, and I need to, so I can cast Drift off. Yeah, okay, so I'm not going to be able to get, tap Gilded Court for an extra color this turn. But I get to bring it back Nascent Light Bang. And I'm not going to crack it before combat because there's no point, or before damage, I mean. Okay, so sack, nascent light vein. Um, I do have extra planes, right? Yeah, I have enough planes. Alright, uh, how do you react to this drift off? Are you going to tap Bell Tower in response? No, you're not going to let me draw some extra cards. Okay, understandable, understandable. Anyways, now Calamity Smith comes down, and yeah, I have a board now, so uh, how are you going to deal with this? If you try to wipe the board, then I just... I can, can I slam Silver Sun Ancient next turn? Uh, six? Uh, no, I don't have double... Or uh, I don't have triple green. If Calamity Smith survives, then I can just plus him, and then I'll have triple green off the gold plus the forest. So yeah, I'm in a very good situation right now. And so how bad is Righteous Shard? Uh, exiles... Okay, so exiles all my creatures. Exiles Rift Off, which means they get King Bat Tower back. Um, well, no, they can't cast it, so it doesn't matter, but I'm just, like, thinking through my lines. Uh, so they can keep up dabbling dangerously. That's probably what they're going to do here, because they're going to dabble for a Righteous Shard to wipe my board. Or I guess they can dabble for a Captivating Dreams. Uh, how close are they to casting that? Uh, it doesn't seem like they're very close. Okay, they're uh, fetching main phase. Does that mean they're playing a Sorcery Speed Removal spell? Uh, I guess they can play Bring the Hells Down and wipe my board. Uh, but if they do that, then I'm just going to start blowing up their land with... Okay, I see. Uh, and they're going to get Bell Tower back. Yeah, that's fine by me. Uh... It's just going to be drift off and drift offs. Uh, do I? I think I do uh, blow up drift off a silver sun ancient. Right? How how bad is Keening Bell Tower for me? Uh, they can use it to keep drawing cards. I guess it also sets back my clock a bit because they can gain life off of this thing. Like I think I'm fine with that. Let them eat cake, which is completely useless. So uh, yeah, actually, does running the bulls kill them? Uh, assuming they don't have a removal spell, uh, the answer is yes. So I should play running uh, the bulls to force them to play a counter spell. And then tap Guild Court and swim for Leith. And tap Guild Court to give it Swamp and then swim for prob probably Lethal. In that case, I should Calamity Smith first to get some extra mana in case they try to uh, reconsider me. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, yep. Does this resolve? Let it resolve. All right. Uh, wonderful. To be in combat, uh, do they have anything? Fail okay, they're going to kill the Wild Court Seeker now. Uh, that's... Actually, no, that's not great for me. But no, it's still fine because... Uh, no, I, now I kind of lose to Righteous Shards. No, if they Righteous Shards, they have to blow up the entire board again, so they lose their King Bell Tower too. I think I'm actually fine here, because Dwayne the Vols will quickly run them down. And then, like, yeah. They need to blow up, blow up my board and also deal with whatever is in my hand. And I don't think they have the mana to both blow up the board and also keep up a counter spell for Silver Sun Ancient. So just pass here. And I'm going to have to... Rem okay, I guess that works. I'm fine with getting extra cards, because I also have a bunch of mana right now. Actually, if they blow up everything, uh, I can't cast... No, I have Luxurious Estate. I can use... So that's... Uh, if Calamity Smith survives, then that is 3 green next turn for a Silver Sun Ancient. Actually, I could just minus Calamity Smith to make a Lotus 
token, and then that also does that. I think it's just better to let Calamity Smith survive because they have less answers to Planeswalkers than they have to artifacts. Or, uh, no, they have roughly the same number of answers, but it's better to di diversify my threat so they can't blow up everything in one go. Uh, right, uh, Baltar also makes me lose life, so I should be like at, uh, yeah, I should be minus two right now. I guess I can draw a bunch of cards and that might let them stabilize. Again, Silverstone Ancient, like they're gonna come down and the mass screw you, and you can't deal with a giant thing if you're mass screwed, right? How are they doing for exile removal? It's basically just righteous shard, right? Does it three procession exile? No, it destroys. Yeah, so I'm in a pretty good position right now. Uh, I guess Ice Point Bridge Sword does stuff, but not really. So how are they going to deal with money of the bulls? Because it's lethal if they don't kill it. Uh, I guess they can ancestral secrets to draw out of lethal range. Yeah, that's probably what they're going to do. Anyways, uh, yeah, let's give this thing. So now I have all five land types in case Wild Court Seeker comes up again. They're going to keep everything up. Okay, this is actually kind of scary right now, because if I cast into so, so they have enough mana to both play Ancestral Secrets and a counter spell, right? I don't think they have enough green, uh, blue, I mean blue sources to do that, actually. So I think I'm just going to go to combat first, uh, attack with everything, uh, see how they not, how they prevent themselves from dying, and then depending on how tapped out they are, I'm going to slam Silver Sound Ancient and probably win the game. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I can't really afford to blow up King and Bell Tower right now because I need to keep them off their extra turn spell. Uh, actually, Aran said that Aran Ascetic lets me play out two lands. Uh, how much does life matter? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, depends on how many reconsiders I'm trying to play around, I guess. Is there anything they can do to blow up Aran Ascetic at instant speed? Not really. Uh, is there anything with Calamity Smith pre combat? No, I'm probably not. I'm just going to see what they have. Yeah, so how are you going to survive this? That's the question. I can't actually put out any more damage than... What? Okay. Oh, okay. That deals with the token. I mean, sure. Yeah, that does deal with the token. I even get treasure out of the deal. I guess the, and then go down to one. So how much untapped? They have enough for a sabotage, which is what I'm uh, very worried about right now. So they tap like that and then sabotage me. And I can't really prevent that from happening. So hmm, let me think. The place over sound ancient target this it, it gets sabotaged so they tap and then they tap king bell tower they survive at one and then they play their extra turn spell and go off uh okay that's yeah i guess i i guess i just couldn't win this game after all maybe i could have played slightly better maybe i should have tried to push more damage although i'm not exactly sure how to do that maybe i should have tried to slam some sound ancients more aggressively because they didn't have counter spells or something but i'm not sure they not why did not slam silver sound ancients anyways Maybe I just never got the chance to, right? Uh, I don't remember why I did. Okay, so uh, Climbing Smith is going up to 8 loyalty. Or oh, Wait, uh, let me ca calculate my mana situation again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Uh, that's one off double casting Silver Sun Ancient. I'm surprised we managed to get that high though. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to keep Climbing Smith around because I don't want to get blown out by a Righteous Shards. Uh, so, I mean, both Luxurious Estates are coming down, but 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, step. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, okay. Well, one of them has to be untapped because I need to make the extra color or extra green, which is going to take even more life for me. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, a 7, and this thing's going to eat a counter spell. I'm just hoping they don't have it. No, they don't have a counter spell. Okay, that's really good for me. 1, 2, 3, 3 4, 5, 6, 7. I can't actually prevent them from playing the extra turn spell, right? If I blow up anything with Silver Sound Ancient, because uh, they will have enough mana. Like, they play a land and they, they're at 7 mana, so they can't play their extra turn spell. In that case, I should just try to get as many things on board as possible. Or I should just blow up the Bell Tower, because I guess it doesn't matter what... You know, I mean, Bell Tower is probably just the best card in play. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Uh, like they definitely have a land in hand, right? So there's no point in blowing up a land here. Yeah, I'm just going to point it at Bell Tower. I, might be a mistake, but whatever. Ostra, sure. Oh, uh, darn. I should have... Well, no, this is legendary, so it wouldn't have mattered. But yeah, now they get to do their infinite combo, I think. They play dabbling it. Mm. All right, all right, fine. Yeah, it seems like I misplayed. I should have pointed Silver Sun Ancient and one of the lands, right? Without prevented par the primordial combo. Uh, it would be at seven and they have second, another land. No, it wouldn't have prevented it because they still get back their start a new one and combo off. Well, this is unfortunate. I, I pro uh, was there a way to ramp more aggressively into the Silver Sun Ancients? Actually, yeah, maybe. So last turn, I could have minus six Calamity. 
And that would have been enough to cast a Silver Sun Ancient, I think. I forgot what happened last turn. I think I should have done that. In this hard cast Silver Sun Ancient, I try to and then start blowing up their lands so that I can keep them off their combo. But now that they have Primor Primordial, I can't really stop them, right? Or, no, they don't have all the pieces yet, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, they have nine mana, so they play they play Primordial and they play Dabbling Dangerously to fetch the extra turn spell. And well, no, they can't play the extra turn spell immediately. And if they uh blink the Primordial, then they don't have enough mana to cast another spell off of it. Okay, I think I might actually have this then. In that case, I should have just blown up a land because I didn't realize how much mana their combo took. I just assumed that if they had enough mana, they win immediately. Although, to be fair, I think they have it because if they didn't have it, they would not have fetched Primordial with their tutor. They would just fetch the extra turn spell and then try to have another go next turn. Actually, uh, yep, there's the Primordial. They still don't. Uh, so what? They grab Dabbling Dangerously. Zaranu. Wait, Zaranu makes a. Uh, okay, yeah, I see. So they can just keep going. So would, have blown, would blowing up a land have helped there? Yes, it would have. Yeah, it would have because... No, they've just played Thriving Isle on tap. Unless they had another Thriving Isle. Yeah, I, I can't really do anything here. So if they... I assume they had an untapped land. If they only had Thriving Isle, then that means blowing up from their land would have helped. Like if they had an untapped land, then this thing... Blowing up from their land still lets them do this. It would just be that the Thriving Isle would be... Oh, fine. Where did they get the Crafty Rain Dreams from? Do they already have it in hand? Uh, fine, fine. All right, uh, let's see. How do I beat this? Uh, well, I bring in the Brazes. Is new growth good? Non-creature permanent. I mean, Drift Ops, def oh, first of all, uh, I bring out all the Let Them Eat Cakes because they're completely useless. I bring in Crown Guard Bands because I can name their combo pieces. I bring in, I bring out Annihilation Suit because they have nothing to kill. I bring out some Drift Ops because they're kind of lacking targets. Well, no, they're. I think they're better than new growth because I really don't want to ramp my opponent, right? So is this what I'm going with? Uh, does Solemn Graveyard do anything? Uh, no, because it literally prevents me from constancing. Yeah, I think this is probably the best uh, no doubt that I can go with. After the festival good, I don't think so because I, I don't need extra creatures. Having like the one ram drift off was kind of nice. And they're going to bring in more permanents, I think. So like Crown Guard Band probably is coming in. So having more drift offs is nice because uh, just randomly I can hit stuff with it. And, and it's not going to ramp them. So like at the same time, uh, no, I, I don't want to bring in new growth because like they win if they get to 7 mana and can combo off. So I do not want to be ramping them. I want to be one that's ramping. So yeah, I'll go with this loadout. And let's see what I get. Uh, okay, this is a pretty good hand. Actually, in fact, it's a really good hand. Assuming I don't master myself. But yeah, turn 1, Nascent Light Vein, Fetch, Forest, turn 2, Mountain. Uh, play out Wild... Oh no, if I play out Wild Court Seeker to 2, 2, it dies to Twilight Ambush, but not... Fatal Flaw. Yeah, I have to decide what I want to play around. And I think the answer is I play out Elvish Witness instead so I don't have to... I still get value even, even if it instantly dies. I think what I'm going to do here is if I top deck another land, then I'm going to play Elvish Witness because then I have land plays for next turn even if it dies. Okay, well, there we go. If I don't, then I play Wild Court Seeker. Uh, yeah, I play Elvish Witness first because like it scries or it surveils. So even if, so, like, even if it dies immediately, I'm still... All right with the outcome. Running of the bows and another elvish witness. Hmm. Do I need running of the bows right now? I don't think so because Asahi is my five drop of choice. And next turn, if elvish witness dies, whatever. If it survives, I play wild court seeker plus elvish witness to scry me towards my next land. And actually, yeah, I don't need running of the bows because grand consonance is my top end. So like I already have enough top end right now, so I should just bomb this. And then elvish witness is good to draw because it's a ramp piece, so I keep it on top. And personally, I'm hope. I mean, they're gonna bolt the bird, right? But if they use up one of the bolts on the Elvish Witness, then the second one has less or might survive. I should probably focus on getting uh four colors first because I want to play Asahi on five, and that's a good lead up to Grand Constance because even if it gets countered, then Grand Constance is free to resolve. So are they gonna let me untap? Yes, they are. So I guess they're holding up a reconsider. In which case, I mean, yeah, that's pretty nice. The new divide's fetching white, right? Yeah, definitely, I mean, it's fetching white. And then, I don't think it matters what order I play things in. Well, no, it does, because if I play Wild Court Seeker first, then I can play around Reconsider. And that's probably a good what? All right, yeah, they're going to kill my thing. Sure. And now that they play out their Fatal Flaw, I think I can just run out Wild Court Seeker pretty safe. Uh, no, I don't want to play out Wild Court Seeker just yet, because I'll use Elvish Witness to describe me towards another land. Right, that makes more sense? Yeah, because then if Elvish Witness survives, I slam Masaha next turn. 
So in that case, I want to fetch immediately, right? I, I can afford to pr preserve some life because like I don't have to play it as quickly. So oh, good, nice. Uh, so go to court or new divide. I think it has to be new divide because I want to get a Sahai down as soon as possible. Like I don't need to get Wild Court Seeker. Well, if I bomb Guild Court, I can just get back with Wild Court Seeker later. So yes, that's uh, so I bomb Guild Court or I'm I bin Guild Court and pass the turn. The next turn I can try to slam a Sahai if they if Elvish Witness survives. If it doesn't survive, then I play Wild Court Seeker and pass, which is not great, but it's fine. Like if they spend all their removal blowing up small things, then I'm fine. Then I can resolve an Sahai and then start taking over the game from there. They pass, so they're probably holding up a counter spell. Means I don't want to jam that thing just yet. Or, no, I'm fine with jamming it because right. Or maybe they're holding up an ancestral secrets. Like if Asahai is a, if I jam Asahai, I think I'm fine into sabotage. I'm I'm pretty happy because they did not kill Elvish Witness. So if they untap and kill Elvish Witness, they don't have counter spells while Quartz Secret comes goes through. Right. Okay. Yeah, I, I've convinced myself. The problem here is I actually don't have the colors for Grand Consonants right now. Yeah, my colors are kind of bad. I should just slam it anyways because it's the best thing I could be doing right now. Like, I, I can't play too passively because that's just going to lead me to... Wait, why did I fetch play? Okay, yeah, I need uh art, uh, land types for Wild Quartz Seeker later. Yeah, let's see if this gets countered. Well, uh, exactly what I expected. Alright, uh, let's see what you have next turn. So if I top deck a uh, green land, I can slam Grand Consonance. And if I don't, then I play Wild Quartz Seeker and hope they play something that I can drift off. But yeah, I'm really hoping that they slam Bell Tower next turn because that leads me to a really good turn next turn. But I doubt they're going to slam Bell Tower because they know at this point that, like, I'm not playing that much pressure on them, so they can just keep up counter spells all game until they have en enough mana to combo. Like, yeah, they're definitely not playing Bell Tower because they don't have the mana to. Uh, let's see. Well, uh, Clan Smith is pretty nice. Yeah, I played Calamity Smith first to eat up a counter spell because, right, is that what I want to eat the sabotage? Uh, yeah, playing like that means I can play around Reconsider better, right? So my main concern here is that Calamity gets countered and Wild Court Seeker uh, gets killed, and then I have nothing to do. Uh, let me just keep thinking a bit. So Jam Calamity, it's a counter spell, play Wild Court Seeker, they untap, they kill my Wild Court Seeker. What happens? Uh, I hope to top deck a green source so I can play Grand Consonance. Does it really matter which order I play these guys in? Like, if they have a removal spell for Wild Court Seeker, they're not going to counter it, right? They're just going to use a removal spell. So the only time it matters if they don't, is if they don't have a removal spell for Wild Court Seeker, in which case they might try to counter it. But what if I do it the other way around, and they have Reconsider? They're not going to Reconsider Wild Court Seeker. The, hmm. So the only good situation is if they don't have a removal spell in wild, for Wild Court Seeker, in which case play Clamity first is better anyways. Alright, yeah, I've convinced myself on this play order. So let's see if this resolves. Yes, the answer is no. Well, hope you don't have an answer to Wild Court Seeker, because I'm really hoping you don't, because if you do, then uh, I'm kind of screwed. Uh, they play a tap land, and... Or they play an, an tap land, and are they going to wipe the board? Yes, they are. Alright, that's extremely bad for me, because now I'm like two mana off Grand Consonants, and they're getting very close to comboing off. Well, uh, hopefully they don't have another answer for Wild Court Seeker, because I really hope they don't. I mean, like, yeah. Uh, but they probably do. Like, they're a control deck, they definitely have another answer. So something I could have done was play out Wild Court Seeker and then pass the turn. But that would have been really bad against instant speed removal. removal. But that, like, this proves that they don't have instant speed removal, or at least small removal, because they would have used it instead of bringing the house down, right? Because the board was... No, I had to... I had also Elvish Witness, which... Yeah, so the board was pretty ripe for wiping. But this doesn't actually prove anything about their hand. Uh, okay, this is not good because... Oh, that's yeah. They're at six man. They're willing to pay life for it, so they have something to. They're they're doing this turn. Okay. All right. Um. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, no point in playing it free combat. All right. Uh, show me what you have. I mean, even if Wildcard gets killed, at least Arnett Aesthetic uh, ramps me up. Like Arnett Aesthetic probably gets me up to five, and then maybe I top deck a green source and slam Grand Consonants. Seems like they're kind of out counter spells, right? Because they uh, no, it doesn't say anything. It doesn't prove anything. Are they playing Dabbling Dangerously now? Okay, sure. Uh, I can't stop the combo, I mean, uh, unless I, I I destroy their treasure. They'll be at 7 mana next turn if they have a land drop, but they're running low on lands, probably. But no, I can't even blow up their treasure because drifts, cause I don't have the right mana colors. Yeah, I might have screwed myself by trying to fetch uh, too aggressively. I think I also might have screwed myself over by like by play playing out Elvish Witness instead of Wild Court Seeker. Because if I play a Wild Court Seeker, they would have been forced to remove it way earlier, right? 
I'm not sure. Like, I probably played this game not super well, or at least I at least probably made some misplays, but at the same time, there wasn't much I could have done. So what am I looking for? Uh, it'd be nice if I can draw a Braze, and then you try to combo off, and then I kill their creature in response to the ETB. Okay, so they, they're, they're getting the combo pieces, so they probably have the combo. I still find it weird that they do, they're doing it now instead of later. Okay, so what can RSA find that would let, get me out of this? I don't think there was... Well, I mean, sure, if you want to fog an attack, uh, feel free. Wait, no, this is still really bad for me, because I still don't get to cast Drift off. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 7. Uh, uh, I, I regret my fetching decisions. I should have, like, after... No, I I, sh I had to fetch like this in order to cast Asahai, right? No, I didn't. I had Elvish Witness. I, I could have just fetched... Um, I could have fetched something other than Island. And then... I don't think I would have fetched planes though, because I probably would have fetched forests for Grand Consonants. Oh, maybe there's something I said I can flip. So, come on, give me something. Well, that's not a good land for what I need. And it's my only option here too, right? Because I definitely need lands right now. Uh, yeah. What, what things, would things have changed if I topped Gilded Court instead? I don't think so, because I didn't have any time to tap Gilded Court at all this game, if I kept it on top. But yeah, now I just lose because they have the combo in hand and the mana to do it. Or do they? Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So they'll have 8 mana. Maybe they're 1 off. No, they have to, if they have the extra turn spell, then yeah, I just lose. So please don't have the extra turn spell. I mean, they, but they probably have it because, like, with how they tutored, there was no way they're going to fetch Star New unless they had it in hand because that's just a, such a specific thing to fetch or to fetch tutor for. But I'm hoping they don't have it, though. Wait, actually, this guy is a 5-5 five five now. Wait, they pass. Okay, so they... Is Cafe and Dream... It's an instant. Why is it an instant? Alright, uh... So they can do the uh, thing, but... Or, no, they were... I see, they were hoping to draw a land, but they didn't draw the land. So that's what happened. Alright, that's really good for me. Ooh, Braze. Okay, so, so I have an answer to their combo now. That's really good. Alright, so... What I need to do here is attack with Wild Court Seeker, see how they respond. There's no point in doing, doing the Waking Gland thing because there's so many ways they could go wrong. But yeah, attack with Wild Court Seeker, I'll see how they respond, let's see if I can braze their thing. Because if I can braze their thing, that, that's really good for me. Alright, uh, let's see what they're gonna do. They let go through. Hmm, so they, they're, they're out of stuff now. Alright, so Nate, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, yeah, there's no point in drift offing the treasure because, so no matter what they do, I'm gonna braze that, the, their big thing in response, right? No, they have sabotage, so, yeah. It's so this uh, fetches planes, like because of course, like there, I need to fetch planes so I can drift off. I try to drift off the treasure token, right? It, because it forces them to play out their thing now, and then I can kill it, and then it, and so then it's no, they can. Uh, well, it forces them to play their thing. It just doesn't work out, right? Come on, let me. Th okay, think. Uh, they're gonna bring. If things if they if I kill their thing in response, they're just gonna bring back the Abbing dangerously and fail flaw. It's still worth it, is it? Like they're gonna go for it end of turn, right? Because if they don't go for it, then suddenly I get to do stuff. So if they go for it end of turn, would it make a diff? It wouldn't make a difference, I don't think. Yeah, I'll just pass. Like there's no point in drift offing because they get the mana anyways from sacking the treasure in response. So I'm just hoping that they have the big. Uh, they have another one of these guys. All right. I mean, it happens. So, uh, so basically, I just have to hope that they don't have a counter spell, and they or they don't have the extra turn spell either. Like even if it goes wrong, or yeah, I have to let them tap. But that means I just have to keep up raise at all times and hope they don't draw into a counter spell or an, an extra copy of whatever they can do to use to protect their guy. Uh, they play their land tapped, or are they playing a tap? They're probably playing flip because they don't need the uh, the colors right now. I'm glad that at least I have Wild Court Seeker in play right now because that's putting some extra pressure onto my opponent. Oh, they're gonna go for it now. Do they, do they have counter spell backup? Oh, this thing too. Why is this thing not target? What? Why? Uh. Well, uh, I guess I'm blowing it up then. Hopefully, you don't have a counter spell in hand because otherwise I lose. Well, they can so they can go for another round next turn. But at least is it a lot? Well, they just play ancestral secrets, but that means that's okay. So that's their free cast per turn. So that means they can't counter this thing. That's really good. I mean, they get to do another go next turn, but they're tapped out, so I get to Grand Constance and hope to flip something. Uh, the problem is I can't Grand Constance pre-combat. 
Does, does Grand Con I don't think Grand Constance even wins me the game because they just get the combo again next turn. So I need to flip enough things that blow up lands in order to prevent them from going for this again. But another drift off. Yeah, I would kind of suck to flip a running of the bulls, though. Oh no, uh, since they're tapped out, they have to spend some mana in order to get Primordial back into hand. So I have at least one more turn. And that's that might just be enough. Uh, I, unfortunately, I can't animate Waking Glen. I'm like, I'm one man off animating Waking Glen right now. Actually, no, it, uh, I'm not going to be able to an animate it because what, Wild Court Seeker brings back the land by the time I already attacked. But yeah, uh, send in with everything. Uh, bring back Nascent Light Bane. Sack it. Or, well, post combat, I sack it for a forest. And then let's see what Grand Constants flips. So green, 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 and then the three random colors that I need. All right, uh, time for this to determine if I win the game or not. Okay, and that's already... Okay, right, I have Crown Guard ban in this deck. That I, f I completely forgot. That immediately makes everything so much easier. Because, uh... Well, what's Crown Guard ban naming? Uh, I know they have Dabbling Dangerously in hand right now. Do I just name it... I mean, I mean uh, Primordials, uh, do they run? They run exactly one. What are the chances they drew one? Well, no, I named Primordial anyways because that's the most likely... Th yeah, because if they blow up the board, Waking Land wins the game for me next turn. So... I named Primordial so that if they top deck the Primordial, they can't win because they need to spend mana to blow up Crown Guard Ban. And then Silver, uh, Silver Sun Ancient blows up. Is he, how much color? How many color sources do they need? Okay, well I don't have to think anymore. Yeah, so that was an extremely close game. Uh, not sure if I can pull it get pull it off again next game, but maybe I can. So yeah, uh, next I guess next game if I draw an early Crown Guard Ban, I can slam it, naming Primordial. They're forced to remove it, and then maybe I can do stuff with my other cards by the time they have it. Well, yeah, but at least this game, at least we know that this matchup is an instant loss. So let's see. All right, this is a wonderful hand. I definitely keep this. Gilded Court, well, New Divide's definitely fetching for us, so Gilded Court's naming an off color. I think I'm gonna name red because I know I have Fury Call Hillian coming up eventually, so I might as well get my double red requirement out of the way first. But yeah, uh, just I need to remember to tap this end of turn. All right, uh, I'll, just, I'll just do it now so I don't forget. All right, so th maybe they have a removal spell, maybe they don't, but it doesn't matter. Okay, there we go. Like there's a state two. Hmm, so Wild Court Seeker or Elvish Witness first. I think I start off with Elvish Witness just to get some better draws and then follow it up with Wild Court Seekers. Because, uh, because Elvish Witness is faster than Wild Court Seeker, right? So, uh, or, hmm. Uh, Wild Court Seeker is better than Elvish Witness in the late game, so I should run out the Elvish Witnesses first to soak up removal for the Wild Court Seekers. Yeah, I'll go with that logic. And like, I'm, I know I'm fetching Forest here, so I should just do it now. Also, it means that later on, I guess, I can start tapping Gold Court for random off colors while I'm dropping Wild Court Seekers. Okay, uh, what's on top? Another Crown Guard ban. Well, the thing is, like, they can't win a game if I have Crown Guard ban in play, right? I think a single Crown Guard ban is enough. Like, because they have way too many ways to blow up artifacts, so there's no point in trying to Crown Guard ban my opponent out of the game. Like, the most thing this thing is, is just a half measure until my opponent has Primordial. In that case, do I want the Gilded Court? And I think the answer is yes, because... Okay, why do I want Gilded Court? I want it because I want more lands. But Wild Court Seeker is already going to give me all the lands I need, assuming they work out. And I have to assume that they work out, because otherwise I'll be, like, not playing to my outs or something. Yeah, I think I've convinced myself to, uh, bin both of these cards. Might be a mistake, but hopefully it won't be. Watch it be a mistake because all my guys get killed and then I don't draw lands for the rest of the game. Okay, so if I ran out Wild Court Seeker there, it would be pretty funny because Fail Flaw wouldn't be able to kill it. But I mean, whatever. Actually, I should I should have topped the land because uh, if I went if like we go one for one. Okay, that's probably a better thing to play than Wild Court Seeker. No, I, I ran out Wild Court Seeker first. Uh, and in fact, I'll even like play around Fail Flaw here, right? Yeah, sure, because it's funny. All right, does this get sabotaged? Seems like the answer is yes, and I, I'm fine with this exchange because they spent two ma uh, three mana countering a two mana thing. They play Ice Point, uh, they play untapped, so they probably have a da Dabbling Dangerously coming up. Uh, so I'm actually hoping to draw land here. No, well, that's more Wild Court Seekers, but mm. yeah, I, I kind of, yeah, I regret bombing the land there. Because I could have been halfway through Teferi Calhelion there. The Calamity Smith or Wild Court Seeker? I think the smart play is to just keep gamming Wild Court Seekers because they're going to run out of counter spells eventually. Uh, I don't need to tap this, right? You know, it happened. Wonderful. Uh, are you going to blow up a removal sp Are you going to spend a removal spell on this? Nope, you're going to use Dabbling Dangerously. All right, so Crown Guard Ban is going to be naming Primordial uh, sometime soon. I do it on a turn that they uh, do something. 
We get Keening Belchar instead. Well, this thing's happening for white right now. Is if they yeah, if they slam Keening Belchar, I'm more than happy to just drift off it. So are they gonna play Keening Belchar? Uh, no, they're gonna blow up the Wild Court Seeker. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, are they playing around drift off right now? I'm not sure. That's what it feels like they are. Um. Okay. Well. Uh. Yeah. I can play this thing untapped. So I go Clam Smith Wild Court Seeker and see if they let it happen. Because they don't have a spell that can deal with both Clam Smith and they don't have a spell that can blow up both the Planeswalker and a creature in the same uh, breath. Uh, and they're at five mana, so they're getting pretty close to Amelia. That means next turn I should probably be either dropping Fury Call Halion or Crown Guard Ban. And it doesn't matter what. Uh, I should probably get. I'll get ex actual planes because no, I already have. Yeah, I have already have three types, so I don't need. Uh, I don't need this guy to be super big, and I don't need blue right now. So I'll fetch a forest because I might need to play Grand Consonance eventually if I top deck it, and that requires three green, which I can't get through anything else. And I, I'll go with that logic. Let's see if this happens. I guess you can reconsider this. That'd be a pretty big blowout, but it also gets rid of the treasure, which I'm more than happy about. Okay, yeah, they do manage to blow me out. But again, uh, oh no, they spent two on. Yeah, they two for uh, they spent two mana on the three thing, three mana thing. So they're ahead on this exchange. Uh, I should have just played Wild Court Seeker because that plays around reconsider better. Uh, they're gonna tap out for King Bell Tower, and I just get to drift off that thing. Uh, it'll be even better for me if I top deck a land. Uh, no, I don't. Well, unfortunately, I just have to tap out for drift out, right? Because I can't let them untap a King Bell Tower because it's just so bad for me. One, two, three, four, five. They're getting pretty close to being being able to do their thing. Yeah, I really wish I played Wild Court Seeker that turn. Or maybe they had a uh, Veil Flower or something and it wouldn't have mattered. But yeah, I should definitely remove this thing because it's going to be extremely annoying for me if I don't. What happens if they also have a removal spell in response? Uh, they use removal on Drift Off and it doesn't hit Wild Court Seeker. And that's a good outcome for me. Alternatively, I go Ar Aesthetic Wild Court Seeker and pretend that the Keening Bell Tower doesn't exist. Is that a good play? No, because that means so many things can go wrong, right? But if they spend mana on blowing up Drift Off, I think I'm happy. Mm. But I'm not ramping if I... Okay, worst case scenario, Art Attack doesn't flip an untapped land. What do I do? I just, I'm just sad in that case. Yeah, I'm, and I'm gonna play it safe. I'm, I'm just gonna rest off the King Bell Tower. Feels really bad, but maybe it's correct. Like it might encourage them to tap it right now, and I'll be really happy with that because I need. Oh, right, right. Uh, gonna, okay, good, good. Please drop me a not a land, man. Uh, well, I mean that land all the way back and on the surveillance on turn two really hurt me in the long run, huh? Maybe I should stop bombing lands off these guys. Maybe I should start realizing that I, I can't afford to bomb lands when I'm playing this deck, when I have those sorts of hands. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, they're getting pretty close to the combo mana. But on the bright side, they're only at uh, four cards right now. So maybe they, maybe they run out of stuff. I thought, oh, yep, unfortunate. Uh, now Kingdom Tower is back in play, but now I get to start dropping my guys without... Hey, if I top deck a land here, uh, I want to play Fury Call Helion. That is a land. That's very good for me. Actually, maybe I go on a second into Wild Court Seeker. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, they can't combo on seven mana exactly. They they need slightly more than that to combo. And I think I always I always play R and Sec here because I want to find lands for Grand Consonance. But like they have Beltar in play, so that that's gonna grind me out turn after turn. They have exactly enough for a sabotage. What are the chances they have a sabotage right now? Pretty high. If I use Fury Call Helion, Helion to blow up their Bell Tower, I'm not going to be able to blow up their lands later. Is that a problem? I have Crown Guard Ban in hand. I think that's not actually a problem. So I, should just try, I should just try to jam Helion, get them to counter it. Next turn they untap, they go to 7 mana. That's fine by me because I they can't combo on exactly 7 mana. And that means Fury Call Helion eats up a Sabotage. It's also, kind of, it's also pretty likely that they just don't have a counter spell right now. In which case that play... Also works out. Like, it just gets a big thing into play. It gets rid of their card advantage, right? Like, mm. and if I top deck a land next turn, I still get to play Grand Constance anyways. And, okay, fine, fine. I'll go for it. Do you have a sabotage? To let it happen. Right, so do I blow up a land or do I blow up the King Bell Tower? I think the Bell Tower is way scary to me right now, so I'm gonna blow it up. And actually, I'll also, like, put this guy into the tunnels. You know, I need to blow up the Bell Tower because uh, I want to. I can't exactly run them out of cards, but they are starting to run out of cards, and I don't want them to ever draw into more counter spells. Like the way I beat them is by resolving a Grand Constance and the only way that, that happens if they, is if they don't have any counter spells. So I should just try to go for that line. They play New Divide untapped. I guess I am tapped out right now. So if they want to slam 
Amelia, whatever the, their big primordial thing. Uh, they can do it now, but that's a bad idea because I guess you get to tap and try to blow it up. Also, they need to blow up Beard Kalhelion soon. Oh, uh, they can do that. Uh, yeah, okay. Maybe I should maybe I should name Captivating Dreams off Crown Guard Ban instead of Elemental. Mm. Okay, so now they are, they're 8 mana, so they can actually combo off. But maybe they don't have it. Like, they were short, but they didn't have any answers, so they probably have it, which is really bad for me. I just have to hope they don't have it. That's really the only way I can play against their deck right now, because uh, I'm not in a great situation. Like, if they t pass, I'm definitely going to slam Crown Guard Ban naming the thing, because I don't want them to get a chance to do anything. They don't, they don't have it. Okay, good, good. And they probably don't have a counter spell either. Who planes? Okay, so do I slam Grand Constance here? How much do I know about their hand? And so, how much do I want to risk? That's the question. So if I go Arn, uh, if, if I go Arn Aesthetic, probably flip a land, play the land, play Wild Court Seeker, and then play Crown Guard Ban, naming the Elemental. They can blow up the Crown Guard Ban, but then they won't have the Elemental. All right, so I should just go for that play because it plays around the counter spell the best. All right, the Grand Constance probably just wins the game off the bat if it resolves, but I don't know if it will resolve. What are the chances they have a counter spell? I think I want to. Play it safe. Like they're at one card, they might be running out. They're probably ran out, running out of steam. So I should just like play it safe. Yeah, play it safe. Uh, actually, I I should tap like this, right? Yeah. All right. Does this resolve? I'm assuming it does. It does. Good. And I get to grab heart heart of the glade, which is nice because then I don't have to lose more life. Uh, if that doesn't matter, like the main thing that matters in this matchup is just getting stuff down. Alright, if you have a counter spell, you're definitely going to counter the Wild Court Seeker, right? Because that thing is just, is just too big of a threat. Let's save the removal spell. Well, they can have a counter spell and a removal spell, right? So if they have a removal spell, then Crown Guard Ban is good. So I should always play Wild Court Seeker first. So let's see if this resolves. It does. Alright, uh, let's see if this resolves. Good. I'm going to name the Primordial because that's the, only thing, that's the only top deck that would immediately lose me the game. And I pass a turn, right? Yeah, I pass a turn. Basically, they can't combo off until they do something about the board. All right, they have a single card in hand. I wonder what that card could be. Like, it's definitely not Primordial because they would have played it already. Oh, they're playing out the last card in their hand. That's good. That, that means I don't have to think it's hard. Like, I, I can know that's not counter spell. If it's bringing down the house, then I'm actually more than happy because now I get to resolve Grand Consonants. Like, I just want to know what their last hand, like, card in hand is so I can know that it's not counter spell. So I can safely resolve Grand Consonants. Okay, I think I win now. Wonderful. And braze. Okay, I, I guess if I flip a land off this thing, uh, off the Grand Constance, I can hold up a braze. One, two, three. So that's my greens and some random colors. And yep, there's Grand Constance. And with no cards in hand, it will resolve. And let's see why I flip. Well, uh, that's very nice. Uh, sure, I'll fetch a mount. I'll get a mountain too because I don't want to lose a life if, if I don't need to. So these guys get bottomed. And well, I'm putting this guy in the tunnels because why not? And I'm gonna blow up. Uh, does colors matter right now? They have. I think they have nymph sources. It's, colors don't matter. I'm just gonna blow up, blow up the utility land because it might matter eventually. And let's start swinging. So let's. What top decks will get them out of this? Uh, Silver Sun Ancient means that a single board wipe doesn't actually get there, so that's nice. And it seems like they're topping decking lands now, which is unfortunate for them. I do have a two turn clock on them, so that's also pretty nice. And another braze. Okay, that's funny. Anyways, since they've emptied their hand, I'm just going to swing with everything. And let's see if they top deck a board wipe. It has to be exactly righteous shards because one of the both still exists. Or no, uh, if they blow up my creatures, no, uh, Primordial comes back. Yeah, they, it has to be exactly reconsider. Sure. Oh, okay. Well, uh, that's convenient. It looks like I just won my first rev GP, which is also pretty convenient because that lets me uh, start my tohification of rev. So if you've looked at the MSCM pro promo wall, like half, more than half of the card are Toho art promos. And it looks like I'll, uh, okay, thanks. Yeah. What card do you even promo? Uh, probably Grand Consonance, because that's the namesake of the card of the deck. There's probably some good art for it. But yeah, this deck definitely felt pretty solid. So uh, props to whoever built the deck. And uh, Wild Court Seeker is the real deal. When it does its thing, it's absolutely insane. When it doesn't, then you f feel kind of sad, but you're still all right because it's still a two mana beer that or better. But in off chance, in the case where it starts like ramping you turn by turn as a five five, yeah, it definitely is a very good card. And yeah, Grand Consonance, you don't have to flip that many cards in order to win the game. Although all my 
grand cousins had no, all my grand cousins flips have been pretty decent so far although i haven't really resolved that many of these grand cousins this, this gp either i think it was just like last game and then this game i resolved i won by resolving grand consonants against the control deck but yeah that, that was my gp run so uh i guess see you for the next rep gp